folks, Mark Munzer here. We're going to have some fun today. We're going to start to learn about stylistically how Keith Gotchow approached uh, some of his piano riffs. Um, so Keith uh, was a Grateful Dead keyboardist from fall of 1971 to February of 1979 uh, before Brent joined the band. And um, when I think about Ke Keith's uh, keyboard playing, I think about some of the things he does with his right hand and left hand that are kind of cool. Um, for example, he does a lot of riffs where the motion of the right hand, like if the right hand is moving down the keyboard on a riff, uh, the left hand might be doing bass lines that go up the keyboard. So that um, motion where you know, the bass is sort of going the opposite motion from the right hand, uh, creates some really interesting sounding riffs. And that's something Keith did a lot of. Um, so we're going to use um, the intro to Mississippi Half Step to kind of um, uh, walk you through um, that approach. Um, and let's get to it. Before I go into the details of this riff, I want to talk about the chords that the riff is over. So the riff is actually over two chords, a D7 and a G7. Um, and if you need um, some more information about how to form dominant seventh chords, um, you can go back to uh, lesson three where we cover that. Um, so the actual intro um, to Mississippi Half Step, it has this little walk down. And then a D7 and a G7. And what we're going to talk about is what can you do over the D7 and G7 that is sort of inspired by the way Keith plays. So let's talk about the progression of the chords. When, when a chord progression is going from, in this case, D7 to G7, and then eventually starting the verse on C. So it's a three chord, D7, 2, 3, 4, G7, 2, 3, 4, C. That's the counting of it, the timing of it, one measure um, for each of those chords. So let's start with the bass line or potential bass lines. So one of the things you can do is find a melodic line that moves you from the root of the first chord to the root of the second chord. So when I'm playing a D7, the bass could go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, let's try that again in time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. So you'll hear a lot of that in Keith's playing where he basically came up with melodic lines that just went from the root of one chord to the root of another chord. And I'll do it really slowly. So D, E, F, F sharp. G, A, B flat, B, C. I call this one B flat. You could also call it A sharp. Um, uh, but let's do that one more time. D, E, F, F sharp, G, A, B flat, B, C. You're just kind of walking up between those chords. Alternatively, you could do a bass line that walks down instead of up. So you could do a pattern like this, where you're playing D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. You're just walking right down the major scale. So if you do that in context with, in this case, I'm just going to do a chord in my right hand. It's, let's do a D7 this way. So we'll do D7, G7. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So basically quarter notes for your bass line. Um, we're gonna talk about right hand in a second, but I just want, those were two different patterns. The one going up is and the one going down is talk about what the right hand does. So the right hand does a little walk down riff where there's essentially two notes that you play and you walk right down the scale. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. 
I'm sorry, my pedal is making so much noise. Hopefully that's not distracting. Um, so let's just hold a left hand uh, root note for those chords while we're doing that. Let's do that walk up bass while we're doing the walk down in the right hand. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. I'm purposely playing it without any kind of feel, like without, you know, you'd swing this a little bit, but I'm trying to kind of give you the basics of the rhythm before we get into sort of how you, how you, you play with a little bit more emotion and, and, and swing. Um, so, that what I was doing there was really simplified because I was playing individual quarter notes with my right hand. But you could make that more interesting by, for example, playing, you know, two notes for each beat. So. That's uh, yeah, a little got a little bit more of a swing to it. Right. Um, you could also do what's called a triplet where you're playing essentially three notes for each beat. So a triplet has a feel of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, you'll hear a lot of rest for triplets like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, there's a ton of them. But the one I'm going to show you for this is um, the first note you're going to hit your thumb, the second note you're going to hit the top note, either your ring finger or pinky, whatever's most comfortable for you. And then the third note you're going to come back to the thumb. So it's one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Practice that a little bit and then do that walk down. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Bring it all the way where you, we're going from the D to the G all the way to the C. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Let's do it with the bass line walking up. One, two, three, 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 one. Okay, so um, getting used to that feel of playing quarter notes and swung eighth notes and triplets, um, those are kind of key to doing these riffs. And of course, you can vary it. Um, that's sort of the beginning of learning improvisation is to kind of, you know, make up different melodic lines, make up different um, rhythms and mix and match them so that when you're playing this song, you're never playing it the same way twice. You're just kind of on the fly coming up with uh, things that, um, that, you know, sound good, um, but that are unique to that performance. That's something that Grateful Dead were so good at. And it wasn't just Jerry. Listen to Keith, you know, listen to 10 versions of Mississippi Half Step. Uh, he probably doesn't do the same intro lick um, at, any of those, uh, at any of those shows. It's different every time. Because uh, he's just making up things. He knows it's going from a D7 to a G7 and ending on the C. And, you know, he can kind of use his knowledge of those chords, the scales to, um, you know, and the different rhythm choices to come up with something on the fly. So I'll just make something up here. I'm going to do a bass line that goes down. I'm going to do a little line that goes up. And I don't know, I'm just going to improvise the second half of it. So. I can't even remember what I did, but that's, all, that's the whole point is to try to make it up as you go along. So I'm going to play the whole intro one more time just to kind of solidify it. I hope you guys enjoyed lesson four. We'll come back with some more in lesson five. Mm -hmm. 